Is your past bothering you? For years, my past used to bother me. <clears throat> if you're following my YouTube channel, it's probably likely you've got come some kind of anxiety around building relationships, building social confidence, overcoming social anxiety. For years, my past was bothering me and I couldn't deal with it. I couldn't deal, I just couldn't deal with it psychologically. I hated some of the things that people did to me. I also hated myself for some of the things that I did to other people. And I didn't like the, um, I didn't like my perception of myself in the past. Does that make sense? So obviously they say it's behind you. There's nothing you can do with it. All you can do is move forward. But there's a lot of truth in that saying, but that wasn't true for me for many years. Because I couldn't move forward because my past was uh, not allowing me to. And my past was psychologically blackmailing me because there was things in the past that I was, as I said, I was deeply ashamed of and furious and angry, and angry about. And no matter how much I achieved in the present moment or in the future or how much I looked towards the future, the past was... making me feel like a fraud, if that makes sense. I had this complex, I used to always think, if people were to find out about my past, they would change their impression about me in the future. So meeting new people was different, was uh, difficult, sorry, it was different, Freudian slip. Starting relationships, especially when relationships started to go well, I'd start really panicking and start stressing out, getting anxiety. Because part of me unconsciously will be thinking, if any of my past personality emerges to the surface, they might change their impression of me. I suppose this, again, this relates to some kind of fear of abandonment or fear of rejection or fear of people changing their impression about me. And it's interesting how, how I am, and we use types of rationalizations to protect ourselves from being hurt by people. And it's weird, because in protecting ourselves from being hurt by people or a perceived threat, we harm ourselves. This is called self-sabotaging and self-hatred. Now for me, I had a very violent past, a very violent past, and I was embarrassed about that and I was ashamed. I was quite horrified by how I'd lived. So because I've gone to great measures to work on myself and to change to change my identity, although I change my identity in every way, which is I improved my confidence, my social confidence, I changed jobs, I did the job I loved, or I still enjoy, I um, changed areas, changed diets, changed my fashion, I'm gonna make a bit of a joke to lighten this subject, changed my hairstyle, improved my vocabulary, became more articulate, re-educated myself through reading books, uh, learning from other teachers is still bothering me. This motherfucker in the past is still bothering me. I keep getting flashbacks from um, fights, fights that I've been involved in, drugs that I've taken, all the lies I did, all the dishonesty that I'd done to people that they done to me. So I just, I felt like I almost wanted to say to the person, and of course I, well actually I did this a few times, I felt like I want to say, well hang on a minute, before you say good things about me, before you say that you want to fall in love with me or before you want to have a friendship with me, there's some things I need to come clean about. And um, I remember saying to one girl, and I wasn't bragging, I was uh, scared. I was ashamed and scared. I said, in my past, I beat a lot of people up. Did you know that about me? And it was a stupid thing to say. There was no social intelligence in that moment, but I was so frightened because this woman, and this is quite a few women, was in love with me and saying good things about me. And when people would say good things about me, I'd want to like it, but it, it frightened me. It brought things up for me. It brought anxieties up. Because when they say good things about me, that means they hold me up. They hold me up and they hold me responsible for <laughs> to continue being a good guy. And I wasn't sure if I could continue by those standards because I had a very dark past. And it's just come to me now why I'm trying to help you in this video and make sense of how I made sense of myself in the past and to help you make sense of yourself in the past. I was a very angry man. Very angry. I was angry about the way my dad treated me and I was angry about the way I let 
friends treat me, some friends in the past. I was angry about bullies, I got bullied a lot. So, anger. I never realised that anger... Anger is a, is a, it's a bad emotion, obviously. But it's not just the emotion itself, it's... It's the consequences of what anger leads on to. Depression. I was um, ashamed that I got the bouts of depression. So of course, and we all do this to some extent, when we first get into a relationship, we show our best self. We show our most positive self. I, I do it, we're all guilty of it, let's be honest. And we, we over impress the person, or the woman, and they think, God! <laughs> this is the most amazing person I've ever met. They're so positive. <laughs> We got so much in common. We agree on everything. This is going to be a great person to date. <laughs> oh man. Little do they know, six months later, all of our shadows start coming out. All of our um, personality disorders, laziness, um, lack of commitment, lack of responsibility, un cleansiness, if that makes sense, where we're, where we're messy. And then of course the person starts to get angry and say, if I knew you was like this, I would never have got into a relationship with you. And you, and you say the same. You say, I, I would never have dated you as well. I'm going to find someone else. And I'm joking here because I need to make light of a joke because this is the Irish in me and it's good because these are, these are dark topics and I'm in a good mood, selfishly. And I don't want to depress anyone. But this is what I was going through for many years. And this was, um, of course it was attached to my social anxiety, my relationship anxiety, my abandonment issues. So, I remember thinking to myself, I gotta make more money. If I can make more money, I'm gonna get these demons away. But that didn't work. I even need to help more people. Because I've always been a teacher. I've, I've always been a natural teacher since I was young. I was teaching people, I was helping people. We're all teachers to some extent, anyway, we are. I remember thinking, I need to transform more people's lives, which I did, and that made me feel great. It didn't get rid of it. All right, I need to be harder on myself. I need to, um, I need to abuse myself uh, with that voice internally because if I abuse myself in some sick way and there's a lot of Freudian psychology to this if I make myself suffer I can uh, the pleasure pain principle I think it is if I make myself suffer then I can deserve to have this woman in this relationship then I can be happy that didn't work it made it worse because I was still dealing with my past actually I wasn't dealing with it sorry that's why it was coming so I had to face my past just to uh, fix the future and the present moment because it wouldn't allow me. I tried all these tricks, I tried all the things I've read. Just get on with it, move on, it didn't work. So I had to start talking about my past. I had to channel my anger, my insecurity into positive things. I had to convert the energy over. I had to get a mentor as well. So these are all the ways I did it. To start enabling me not to feel guilty and ashamed and to feel that I'm going to be caught out, I'm a fraud. You guys ever felt like that, or women? Ever felt like if people were to really know me deep down, oh, I'll be, oh, I'm, I'm fraudulent, I'll be caught out for something. And that's what I think most people are frightened of. I was, we're frightened we'd be found out for our past. We've all got things that we're ashamed of. We've all got things that are dark that we don't want people to know. But we won't have good relationships if eventually we don't show a person who we are. And it's not just about showing all our good sides. As my friend used to say, I want a woman to take me in all forms, or if you're a woman, a man in all forms, or a person, or relationships, or friendships. So at some stage, and obviously with social skills, you don't have to bombard people with all your problems, but at some, even yourself, to face it psychologically, this is how you clean it and get rid of it, and continue to do it. So I wrote about it, I spoke about it, uh, I taught other people, that's how I've been able to be a really good teacher and help other people to deal with their past and to become more socially confident and happy and get better of relationships and overcome abandonment issues. So I faced it. I faced it on every level and I'm trying to explain how I did it, but you, you've got all the answers. And sometimes facing it, don't, you don't have to tell someone, but you have to come to accept and love yourself in the past. Does that make sense? Am I make, explaining this right? Because I'm trying to make sense of myself getting this out. So emotionally, you've got to overcome your trauma, your past trauma, pain bodies. These are the spiritual practices. You've got to start observing your past but not identifying with it in, in a way of thinking of a past story and then getting angry and then taking it out on the person in the present moment who's, who knows nothing about your anger. So we have to start owning our own anger, 
getting better at emotional control than exercising the anger out and channeling it into good things. And this is how I did it. This has been the most beneficial lesson to me achieving more happiness and becoming more confident in my relationships. And just, you know, just being happier with myself. So I wanted to share that with you. Really just have some support, just to say you're not on your own. Because all these fears that we go through, the worst thing I think is to think that I'm alone, I'm the only one, when you're not. Everyone has this. But I just had a dark past that was full of violence, that was full of shame, lots of things I did wrong. So um, I told people about it that it was relevant to tell. And you can do it in a very positive way. You don't have to be angry as you tell it. That's a big mistake we make. We get emotional, we get angry, then we put on this fear onto other people. You can be relaxed about it. I do it when I teach people. I say, I've been through what you've been through. I understand how you feel. I've done things that made me ashamed, and now I've overcome it, and you can overcome it nice and calm. The more calm you are, the better the person will receive it. And it, become, it can become inspiring. It, it becomes the very thing that makes you successful. One of the people I'd would recommend you to check out is Mike Tyson who's always honest and generous about sharing his past shame and how he's used that to become successful and a better person and I just I love that about him so I think it's really coming to terms with what you don't like about yourself and finding some peace and liking that about yourself and then you can go on and continue to live life and not live in the past and actually I know that they say we can't change a past but I don't believe that we can. We can if, we're, if you're very spiritual and you're connected. You can go back in the past as your new self and look at your old self and go into all those scenarios that made you embarrassed and shame and get some psychological relief. I've done it so I know this works. And it, all these practices are quite painful to begin with but massive relief after. And that's what I'm doing now by doing this video. I'm just if anything comes up for me, I talk about it and I use it in a positive way to inspire. This video here that's 12-15 minutes is probably going to inspire hundreds of people. That makes me feel good if I can help anyone else and it makes me feel good. And then that does away with these inner voices that would say, well, you've got, they've got this good impression about you here, but what if they were to know about this about you in the past? Would they still have the good impression? Well, we find out. We test it. We be brave. And we usually find that people connect better with us on our shames, our embarrassment, our guilts, our, our sickening insecurities, as opposed to how much money we make, how many women we've had, if you're a woman, how many men, how many things we've achieved. Those things are great and inspiring, but let's be really honest here. We usually connect on our vulnerabilities and then we move forward from there. So I wanted to share that. Like and subscribe, enjoy the process. I love you guys, thanks for the support. And uh, come to terms with your past, have a better future. I feel so cheesy saying that. That sounds so American, but it just came out as authentic. I'll see you soon, bye.